creep, didn't we? Now we can focus on the Battle City Finals! It's this easy, folks. Now that the evil Merrick has been vanquished once and for all, they can finally get back to doing the things that matter, like playing this bleeding Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. Because this is how easy it is for all anime, like how the curse of Dio Brando was immediately stopped when Jonathan vanquished him once and for all, and how everyone, including himself and his descendants, lived happily ever after, forever after, forever, and ever after. Look, Serenity, I know you're really excited to see your big brother duel in the finals, but I'll tell you, between us, girlfriend, Joey's not gonna last too much longer in the Battle City Tournament, especially once he has to face me in a duel. You know, with that look and the slow, weird 1980s pornographic music playing in the background and how she's saying how Joey's not gonna last with her, makes me feel like she's not talking about dueling. She wants that Brooklyn salami. Who beat who last time? Luck. Besides, Duelist Kingdom's ancient history and- Ancient history? Duelist Kingdom ended like two weeks ago. Okay, I didn't send this nightmare face that happened earlier because it was pretty funny and it lasted about as long as a Blue Eyes White Dragon Duel Links combo. But, however, I will be awarding this one a sin or two or fifty on account of it being horrifying. Word on the street is, we put them on our duel discs and the secret site is revealed. That makes sense to me. Ah, yes, makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Makes total sense. Because who hasn't put six translucent puzzle cards into their toy and then have magical beams and sh start shining everywhere to reveal a location to you all? You say you haven't? I call you a liar. <laughs> <laughs> evil laugh cliche. <laughs> oh my slifer, two evil laugh cliches in a row? This is a Yu-Gi-Oh! Sins first. Oh, thank goodness you're all right. You were shouting and tossing around. Solomon is kind of silly in the figuring out Bakura is possessed category. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you're awake, Bakura. You were shouting about acquiring all the Millennium items and killing my grandson. Did they happen to mention where the finals are being held? Oh, I was so excited by the news I forgot to ask about that. Okay, I get that Solomon is understandably happy that his grandson and friend qualified for the Battle City Finals, but he doesn't notice that Bakura's eyes look like this when they should look like this. Bakura feet. I've got work to do. You need rest and we haven't gotten your test results yet. Test results for what exactly? He came in here with an arm boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no! Not again! Solomon uses his last moments of consciousness for a little on-the-nose throwback to when Pegasus did this to him in episode 2. Starting to think the animators really like having their transitions to commercials being this eyes only while everything else fades to black transition. Now then, let's see what kind of deck you have. What? And you call yourself a duelist? It's pathetic. Bakura's reaction to this kid's deck is my reaction to when I see half the decks being posted in the Duel Links subreddit. Also, come on, Bakura, you have your occult deck. You did this just because you knew this kid was running the likes of Seven Colored Fish Beatdown. Bakura throws these cards in such a way that they all land perfectly face down to save the animators from having to draw them all. This guy's shorts and planter's peanut pose is worth 20 sins alone. Dude, I can't wait. These finals are gonna rock. You. Can a kind soul out there please explain to me why Team Unicorn's Breo from 5Ds is here and why he looks stoned out of his mind? Okay, so not only do we have discount Breo up in this bitch, but we got the Postal 2 dude here? Bakura, this guy is a dangerous man. If he asks you to sign a petition, do it and don't Hi ask there. questions. Like because if petition? you don't, he's probably gonna. I'm sorry. You're gonna be fucking kidding. <laughs> oh, oh. Would you look at me? I'm scared of a crow. Hey, dumb bird! <laughs> These are not really zombies coming up out of the ground, but this guy deserves to get eaten by zombies for deciding to yell at a bird. Speaking of this little prick coming up out of the ground, how did he get in the ground in the first place? Hey guys, bury me alive. I'm gonna spook the shit out of this next guy. Aye, smashing night, ain't it? Holy crap, it's an Australian zombie! You have Aye. entered the lair of the living dead. It's not a very nice place. In fact, it's a blooming nightmare. We get it, you're from zombie Australia. If that creep bandit Keith didn't take all our star chips, we would have made it to the Duelist Kingdom Finals. Hmm, yes, very possible that you would have been able to make it there. But, the better question, why would you trust this guy, Mr. Shades, American Flag Bandana, Sunglasses, Blondie, Bandit Keith? Does this guy really look trustworthy to anybody? And I know myself that he's not trustworthy because I myself am a true-blooded American who bleeds the colors of red, white, and God bless every one of us! 
So they're no match for Bakura's strength because he's evil and um, something, something, Millennium Magic? Because I can't think of any other solution, ladies and gentlemen. Because it would make sense if Adrian Gecko, Alito, or Girog was able to restrain Zygor like that with no problem whatsoever. Because they look like this with their shirts off. But I'm just not seeing that with Bakura, everyone. I can duel fair and square, especially if it means a trip to the finals. If we're going to duel, then take off your mask and show me your face. Person takes off mask to reveal another mask underneath cliche. And you and I both know that's his real face. If you're so confident, why not raise the stakes? The winner takes all. Uh, not uh, likely. You think we're dumb enough to risk all five cards? Your cowardice comes as no surprise, but let me remind you the finals begin soon and you're running out of time. Mm -hmm. He's right! I accept your challenge. Besides, with only one locator card, you can't be much of a duelist anyway. This is such sh logic because for all you know, that could really mean that he's just a major procrastinator and just got started at the last minute. And also, who would accept this terrible bet anyway? It's like, yeah, the finals are running out, but if you lose, you have four, and he has only two. Hey, this fog's as thick as a, a really thick soup! Originally in the Japanese dub, this moment was used to sort of allude to the fact that Zygor, Sid, and Bones have been transported somewhere that is not the Earth. <laughs> but in the dub, it's been exchanged for that bit of grade A dialogue. My face down card. And it's shallow grave. This magic card allows me to revive one monster from my graveyard and place it back on the field in defense mode. While it's true that the shallow grave does revive a monster from the graveyard in defense position, it's actually in face down position. Like your mom. You can't lose, Bonesy. Bonesy. Skull Invitation, do your dirty work. The anime visualization of Skull Invitation's burn damage is an awkward tickle. Spiritualistic medium, and it provides my Earl of Demise with an additional 500 attack points for every card destroyed during my turn, giving my monster 2,000 more attack points. Seto Kaiba would be absolutely f***ing his $1 million pants if he knew that somewhere on the planet Earl of Demise, Earl of freaking Demise, would be able to crash into his obelisk and kill it. A soul is doomed to wander in the darkness of the Shadow Realm. No! no! See you later, lads! Oh, 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 come back! He won't get far. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that Hell has that mechanic that Super Mario Bros. 2 had. You thought you'd win this duel, but it was I, Bakura. Ectoplasma extracts the very soul of my monster and transforms it into an energy so powerful it can penetrate your cage and destroy the rest of your life points. Or in other words, your nightmare steel cage, which is just swords revealing lights, edgier brother, does not protect you from effect damage. And now, you must all wander the Shadow Realm until I choose to set you free. <laughs> Well, we just witnessed Bakura kill three people, ladies and gentlemen. That's three counts of murder. Unfortunately, that's where the show ends for the dub here, but in the sub, it actually goes on to show Mayan crew cruising in her car. I don't know why this part was snipped out. It's not like anything bad happened, but I guess they snipped it out because they could not have Kaiba looking like a cool dude in the dub. Directions we got from Joey's dual disc said Kaiba Corp Stadium's about two blocks from here. Then why are we parking all the way back here in Nowheresville, my? So when the finals are over, we won't get stuck in traffic. Plus, it's just two blocks. I'm sure there's someone here that has a flashback or a narrative they can go into while they walk. And quit all your crying already. You look like a big baby. Humiliation flashback. And I guess I... I was touched by your story and I wanted to help, okay? Whoa, check it out. Will you pay attention? Girl divulges her true feelings while boy doesn't pay attention, cliche. You gotta be kidding driving like that. Who does he think he is? Uh, hey. uh, uh, Look, pal. Around here we... Around here we what? Wait, no, I, I want him to finish that. Around here we what? Around here we don't drive through walls? Is that the same guy in the poster? Yeah! But you, him, what? It's you, Jean-Claude Magnum. I'm your number one fan. Joey is a fanboy. Also, John claude Magnum. That's not even subtle to the Jean-Claude Van Damme reference. Maybe you heard of me. I'm kind of a celebrity myself. You know, second place, Duelist Kingdom. Walking past the main Brooklyn boy and ignoring him in such a disrespectful manner is worth five sins alone. You may be popular, Mr. Van Damme, but you can suck a million dollar dildo. 
Have you forgotten the offer you made me exactly one year ago? What offer? It was an offer of love, Mai. Flashback to apparently the Titanic. Mai is playing her harpy lady in Rose Whip or whatever that is in the proper zones, but what she's doing is playing them upside down, allegedly so we could see what they are. You've got spunk. I like a girl who can stand up to me and tell me what's on her mind. Take this ring, Mai, and be my wife. Huh? So I guess the thing that is derogatory in this world is to marry the first woman who humbles you via this card game. Ask me again when you can beat me in Duel Monsters. Oh. I guess it's too late to say I was kidding, huh? The classical man doesn't pick up on sarcastic marriage conditions cliche. I've come here today to make you the luckiest girl in the entire world. My, take my hand in marriage and I promise you this ring will not look as stupid and comedically huge in this box as it will on your finger. Give me one good reason why I should marry this clown. Because if you don't marry him, I won't be able to visit your Beverly Hills mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Joey is really the reason we enjoy this as much as we do, right? I want to show Mr. Hollywood Ninja Boy that I'm not just some prize to be won. Mai is not only one of the stronger female characters in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe, but she is also a strong independent woman. I play Ninja Commander Akusa in attack mode. <gasps> what kind of ninja noise was that? It's like, I gotta think of something cool to say. And then the guy just went, Ugh! Your monsters are just like your movies. Second rate and not around for very long. Touche. The sad part about this is that Smith & Wesson doesn't even freaking deny this. Dude, Smith & Wesson, what the f*** does that even mean? You know, Smith & Wesson Magnums. The guy's last name That's is Magnum. the stupidest joke I've ever heard in my life. You know, you think you're so oh, clever. Oh, you think you're just with a comedic all master, don't you? Well, singers, then why don't you start writing you just My Amazon sword woman. Ooh, hey, check it out. The debut of the Amazonist deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, while I do like that the original handler of this deck is my Valentine and Duel Monsters, what I will never forget is how the other handler of this deck is Tanya, aka Bastion's dominatrix girlfriend in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Because who could forget the legendary comedic scene of Bastion being dominated with an earshot? I think that Mai's really cool, don't you, Joey? She's so tough, she doesn't let anyone push her around. I guess. If you think it's cool to have a really loud mouth, a mean disposition, and to walk around acting like you're the greatest thing since cheese fries, sure, I guess you could say my school. Two sins off for this being the second time you've made the crowd engage in side spilling laughter, Joey. Keep it up, you unit! That's four ninjas for the price of one! Joey, does this mean Mai's in trouble? Nah, it'll take a lot more than a bunch of second-rate ninjas to stop a duelist like Mai. Trust me, I know firsthand how good she is. Especially when the strongest ninja here can't even beat over Gemini Elf. Battle Ox, for that matter. And now, my four ninjas, attack my future wife's life points directly! So, let me get this straight. Jean-Claude Magnum's primary win condition is to summon the Ninja Master Shogun and then fill the field with... Ninja beat sticks, if you could even call them that, and then just pray the opponent doesn't have anything higher than 1600 attack? Because that's what this looks like, because the only reason any of this is working is because Amazon as Swordswoman is weaker than Shogun. Otherwise, this guy couldn't get over normal summon battle ox and pass. Also, I guess the Amazon as Swordswoman doesn't have the effect where your opponent takes the battle damage you would have taken instead. I mean, it's just 100 damage you would have taken, but still. Hovering overhead, my ninja master is protected from all of your monster attacks and magic cards. Oh no! My kite also allows my ninja to bypass any of your monsters and attack your life points directly as long as I sacrifice one of my own monsters first. Jean-Claude Magnum's field is clogged with laughably weak cards, so Mai has his dual one with Cyber Harpy Lady alone, but it seems he's mastered the signature technique of every Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist, top decking some bullshit. Now we can start planning our honeymoon on Waikiki Beach. It really is always Hawaii, isn't it? Honeymoon in Hawaii, cliche. You don't happen to have a harpy's feather duster in your hand, do you? Don't you think I would have used it by now? In that case, what do you think I should wear to your Hollywood wedding, huh, Mai? <gasps> Very hilarious, but they can totally just disregard the floating head in the sky. And the reason I say that so confidently is because Mr. Douchebag here left a naked 300, 500, and 700 attack point monsters on the field. Only Shogun is protected, just kill the weak ones. So, do some Yu-Gi-Oh characters' hair just get insanely wide towards the end of a duel or something? First Weevil, now Mai. I mean, look at that thing, it's alive! Hey Mai, I got some great ninja destroying advice! Look, I can do this on my own! Well, excuse me. I was only trying to help you win so you wouldn't have to miss out on the Battle City Finals, Mrs. Grumpenheimer. Mrs. Grumpenheimer is now my new favorite thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you're starting.
starting to bug me, kid. Why don't you leave this duel to the grown-ups, you little twerp? Don't push me, Claude, or I'll show you a few ninja moves of my own, you big A. Huh? Uh, what? I'd do the same for any of you. <laughs> I get that this is the filler before the Battle City Finals begin, but this episode has been nothing but the Joey and my relationship tension hour, and I love it! Attack his life points directly with your triple scratch attack! The Harpy Lady's triple scratch attack is a giant claw tornado. Ah! Ah! Let me out, you sore loser! My! If I can't win your heart, my, then I'm just gonna have to steal it! Well, hope you enjoy your pretty boy rectum being violated by Big Blue in your freaking prison bed because you are going to jail for kidnapping! Hey, my! Uh, come on! Let go! Joey getting the 100% upskirt on my right now, making all the my sims seethe with jealousy. That's it! Ah! Oh my obelisk, he finally got his dream of being crushed by my. Please, crush me! You're the best, Joey! But you could have married a movie star. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to kick your butt in the finals, would I? Plus, if you ever did get married, you'd drive your husband crazy. Uh, yeah! Just before the episode ends, just for the fans, Joey did it again and hit us with one more final zinger. Never stop being our favorite character, Joey. Now let's get inside that stadium and do what we all came here to do. Yeah! The Battle City Finals start tonight! May the best man win. You mean woman. The setting of the hype for the Battle City Finals to begin was executed so well. But is it really that hopeless? I think not! Merrick underestimates the feasibility of being a main protagonist in this card game anime for lawyers. <laughs> Kids. Soon I'll rule the whole world! Isn't that right, my friends? Plus five sins for this creepy as hell shot of Taya and Joey. Also, is this Merrick's way of monologuing? I thought he just thought thoughts in his head. When little Yugi sees his best friend. Oh, there it is. I've secured 12 locator cards for the Battle City Finals. Good Odeon. And I trust you use your cancerous deck that runs 60 traps. Yes, Master Merrick. Every kid was salty at my skin.